You don't see anything out of the ordinary. Okay. Looks like a very normal room. The only um, thing the only thing that even remotely draws your attention is that the windows are open, which they kind of have to be in the middle of the day to keep things aired out, but other than that, it everything looks normal. I will close the windows. Okay. And um I will um come back down and take a, a seat next to the hearth and I will open up the apothecary book and just begin perusing it. Okay. Uh let's hop back over to the halfling. All right, Rist, you arrive outside of a stable, which is about over here. Okay. It is at this point I will note that my uniform is worth gold crowns in terms of its cost, so it shouldn't make me look like a lowly beggar. What's your um, status level? I am silver one. Okay, yeah, you're fine. You do not get harassed while passing through town. You get you get a couple of curious looks from some of the watchmen, um, especially if your badge is on display, but none of them seem particularly interested in stopping you. No, once I get back in town, I'm going to take my badge off. Okay, then yeah, because no, nobody even... I, I don't want uh, the gangs to know that there's a Bogenhofen watchman wandering around this town. Yeah, no one, no one even spares you a second glance. I will find the horse trader. All right, he's fairly easy to find. Uh, you don't right really have to ask around that much. Once you get into this part of town, you actually see a few signs that have the symbol of a horse with arrows drawn, and by following those, you're very easily able to find this place. And it's 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 basically just set up against one of the. Um, wooden palisade walls that make the outer rim of the city um and it's it's fairly large but it's it's got a nice set of stables a fair number of fields to basically break horses in by having them do that thing where they run around a post and uh, a couple of uh fairly small but effective looking training fields that, that they probably use for younger steeds I will spend a few minutes gazing at the horses as if I can understand what makes a good horse before I will approach the horse person. All right. You, you do see an older man um, who is fairly wrinkled, and uh, but there's a look of fierce strength and assurance to all of his movements. Um, this guy looks like he lives and breathes this stuff and has for many, many decades. Oh, it's a pleasure to meet someone as knowledgeable about their trade as you. You can tell just by looking at you. Uh, he raises an eyebrow. You, you approach. He says, can I help you? Ah, yes, I'm wrist fumblefoot. I'm glad to see you have such horses still, despite the, um, I'll call it an influx in purchases. Uh, he crosses his arms and says, I'll put this politely, but I don't care much for chit-chat, so if you have a point, get to it. All right, horse, war horse, for a noble. He, <laughs> he just laughs. Battle trained. He, he laughs, can. he laughs openly. And looks down at you and says, If you could afford it, I'd be able to see the gold sticking out of your pants. Like he deigned to come down here himself. No, he sent me to see if there was one around before he goes to the bother of coming here. Or sends someone to. Uh, he... Uh, raises an eyebrow. After all, all, all of the best horses have probably already been picked up for that hunt. He raises an eyebrow and says... Best hunting horses, sure. But a proper war horse or a destrier? We've still got some solid ones in stock. He uh, fr he looks down at you and scratches his chin and says, What kind are you looking for? Any particular breed? Fighting style? Armor? Uh, I describe Raymond's old horse. All right, he 
nods as you continue to talk, and he kind of frowns and says, You said a Bretonian? Oh, yeah, got his horse to charge a inflamed crazy bear. Uh, he frowns and sort of looks around the stable thoughtfully, and he has a small triangle-shaped beard that he kind of pulls at while he's thinking. And then he turns back to you and says, I, I might have one or two. Bretonian horse, uh, Bretonian riders can be tricky. Their steeds tend to be built more for speed than raw power like ours are here in the Empire. Is that why they're known as good horsemen? It's because of the speed? Uh, he, he shrugs and says, I think it's more that they just have a, that riding horses is one of the only redeemable things about that squalid little shithole of a country. Riss will pause to consider says, that sounds about right. Uh, he crosses his arms and says, we could discuss more, but I want to see payment. Or proof of it, at least. All right, I will take out ten crowns and then put them away. Uh, it he... ain't much and not enough to buy, but people like me usually don't walk around with that kind of coin if you catch me drift. He chuckles and shakes his head and says, All right, are you the one that's going to be choosing the horse? Nope, I just got to report back that you got the good kind and right kind of horses. Well, I Got can... to see him, though, or else you know how nobles can be about specific things. He lets out another humph, but uh, uh, starts walking towards uh, one of the further away sets of stables. Ah, but I've always been a bit interested in horses. Understand there's flanks and other things that you can tell things about, and I basically want to just prod him with thing information in hopes that he gets into talking about how you can tell what a what a good horse is. Roll either charm or gossip. Whichever you feel more comfortable with. I shall attempt to be charming. Uh <laughs> He 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 kind of he kind of uh smirks down at you and says you're very talkative, aren't you? Well, it's one of the good traits to come out of the moot right after food. Uh, I'm also a great listener, though. He he nods and says, Yeah, I catch that. It's It'd be bad business for me to go off revealing all my secrets, though. Uh, what's a secret in knowing good horsey talk? Like hands tall. It always seemed a bit off, and I will hold up my hand. To measure a horse by hands, you could get 20, 30 of the things in, a, in there with the height that some of these horses get. He shrugs and says, I didn't make up the rule system. And uh, by that point, he stops outside of a set of stables, and he kind of gestures, but then he looks down at you and he frowns, realizing that you can't see over the barriers uh, <laughs> that lead into each of the stables. And he sort of looks around before... I jump up on top of the barrier Okay. take a look. You, you manage to leap onto the barrier and pull yourself up enough that you can see over it. And <clears throat> behind it, you see a, from your perspective, a colossal specimen of a horse. That's a pretty interesting... Um, I, think it's, I think it's called a molt, but it, it's got like a really interesting swirling mix of... Uh, brown and white colors with this very large all white mane and the moment it sees your head peek over it it seems to uh focus on you and it starts like coming towards you at a fairly reasonable fairly quick speed considering it seems to be casually trotting as the safe uh he he frowns and says I wouldn't, I can't, I wouldn't guarantee anything. Good horsey, don't go biting the face off. Uh, mm. 
it it approaches and it kind of sniffs at you before it lets out a very wet snort directly in your face that's just got wonderful you have lots of wonderful gigantic particles of wet snot stuff all over you ah i will wipe my face lovely it certainly got a peculiar temper he nods and says this one's fairly well broken in a good steed for someone that perhaps needs a little bit more even tempered there's one other one i want to show you though <clears throat> right nice to meet you even tempered he walks over to another one and gestures and waits for you to leap i shall attempt the leap can i walk <laughs> along the barrier to this uh not unless you want to pull yourself up to be even with the other horse that has a moderate interest in you that's fine you don't need it's not a hard check um you pull yourself up once more to look over the edge and in this one you see a steed that's all black except for a, it basically has its the its feet right above the hooves have large white tufts and then it's the very end of its face is white with a streak that goes up between the eyes and it has a black mane and the instant it sets eyes on you it lets out a very distressed noise and charges right at the gate um, I would like to gallantly fall off the gate and hopefully behind the main horse guy. All right, you let go of the gate and fall, and there is a notable thump with a distressing amount of cracking in the wood uh, from this creature slamming into it. Uh, but the, the horse master of this particular establishment seems completely unfazed and looks down at you and says, well, you've got a reasonable reaction speed, if nothing else. Ah, oh, that's... That's a crime on the streets, it would be. And I look at the <clears throat> horse. That thing has murder in its eyes. He nods and says, Yeah, she's strong, though. And fast. And can ha handle quite a bit of armor on her. A little on the aggressive side, though. I wouldn't exactly call her broken in yet. Would need a pretty experienced horseman to get anywhere decent. Otherwise, it'd be kind of dangerous to ride her. Uh, I take a look at this gate and how thick the wood is and how bad it has splintered. Uh, there is... It has folded towards you a good bit. Um, it seems at least sturdy enough, at least in the horse master's opinion. Though the horse has backed off since it no longer can see you and seems to have chilled out and goes back to walking uh towards the back of its cage where it resumes whatever it was it was doing but you would feel very uncomfortable granted you're not an expert on it but you would probably feel very uncomfortable daring it to charge again how big are those two the black one's massive um Unfortunately, I don't personally know horse speak, but he gives you a rough estimation that as far as horses go, they're kind of in like the top 20 percentile among imperial horses, which are larger than normal. They got them fancy papers with pedigree and things. I hear the nobles are all about that stuff. He nods and says, I can provide you some documents if you think you'll need them. If your noble's coming here, though, he probably won't require them unless he's using them for show. But these are not show ponies. These are ba these are destriers. They're meant for combat. Oh, so they're combat trained already. Well, besides the black one who, I assume, was born to eat metal. Uh, he chuckles and leans against the fence that was cracked with seemingly little concern and says... Oh, they're both well trained for war. Can take. They know all the basic commands. Obviously, they'll have to get used to whoever's writing them, especially if they're Bretonian. They're not going to be super familiar with the accent. But they should make stable enough steeds once he gets enough practice in. Which, if he's hopefully a half decent Bretonian, he knows how to break in a horse. I spent some time talking with him before I kind of expand the subject to marveling at how these two top tier horses have been left unbought with the big hunt and all the nobles swarming into town uh he he uh shakes his head and says 
you wouldn't want these kinds of horses on a hunt. Look at them. They're huge. They're meant for fighting. They're meant for bowling over orcs and beastmen and giving you a chance to fight horrible creatures that are many times your size. They have your weight class. They're meant to wear armor. These are not the horses you want for lightly galloping through the forest at full tilt trying to catch some animal or whatnot. Oh, I am sure that's true. I just call it a bad assumption that there's always some young noble too big for his britches who wants the biggest, toughest looking horse around. He chuckles and says, well, thankfully, those kind of nobles tend not to be terribly interested in going hunting for a deer. I don't know whatever it is they're going after these days. Oh, a big, massive white stag that can murder eight people all at once. He rolls his eyes and says, murder eight idiots, maybe. Morons probably charged into a bad spot and impaled themselves on a bunch of trees or got messed up by something else and it's just blamed on a stag. Stag can't take out a party of eight. That's what I thought, unless it's some kind of demon deer. He uh, chuckles and uh, shakes his head and says, Nothing but superstitions. Ah, so you aren't bothered about the Hager Cribs then? He looks in All their I hear is talk about how awful they are. He looks in their direction thoughtfully and pauses for a time and says, They're wild. I'll give them that, but they're not inherently evil. It's just people being full of nonsense. Right. I would like to gossip with this man. Go for it. To basically ask about the local horse people around. And who has really good horses, like, to compare with how... So I can look at them and see how much better his horses are. Okay. Hmm. Uh, he uh, frowns down at you and he says, We had an arrangement... Mr. Ah, true, true. And that's wrist fumblefoot. He nods It's going to be beaten about that bush. He nods and says, they sent someone named Fumblefoot to look for a horse. It's an honest family name. But no, they sent someone else. And she wanted me to find a place because she's a bit busy at the moment. He raises another eyebrow and says, a woman? You know, I get that question a lot. But yeah, call me shocked too. He, he shakes his head and says, must either be a poor noble or a mad one. In any event, I've held up my end of the bargain. I showed you the horses. Now you show me the buyer. All right. Um, I will consider for a moment. And tell him I will be right back with the person who is was sent here to get this all worked out. Okay. And I will run off to Verve and pass this coin along. All right. As you are approaching towards the inn, uh, you see you encounter, like when you're about here, going through that crossroad, you encounter... Uh, at that crossroad, a familiar individual, as you see a very stocky uh, and bulky shadow um, that, despite your small size among the crowds, instantly picks you out with an almost predatory gaze. And you hear a rumbling uh, accent from across the way that says, Ah, it's the Wizard Wrangler. Ah, Sir Dwarf, it's great to meet you again. Uh, I understand that uh, Verve already spoke with you. He nods and says, Me and the Watelgi seem to be on a similar enough page. I was just on my way now to your inn to check up on the manling. Ah, oh, you probably should. Something's been eating him, apparently. He... <laughs> He, he raises an eyebrow, but uh, doesn't respond and starts oh, walking. Oh, sorry. Feasting is the word they're using. That an a nemi. He, he He's shakes, got a nemi. He shakes his head and starts muttering <laughs> uh, under his breath. 
but uh, it pushes past you very abruptly and starts heading off towards the end at a very uh, solid pace. And uh, X Sageaton. Uh, as he don't wa- know what Sageaton is, but it sounds pretty bad. Uh, as as he's walking, he he says something in a language you don't understand that uh, has a very distinct sound of rumbling rocks and uh, shifting earth. But despite not being able to understand it at all, you still feel somehow insulted. Oh, now there's no call for that. So, Tech. Oh. I have linguistics, uh-huh. which means I'm good at picking up languages. Uh-huh. And though I haven't been at camp very long, there are dwarves speaking dwarven loudly outside of it. Correct, but you would need to spend a good amount of time among them on a regular basis to pick up Coswood. Yeah. That is the case. I want to make a language check not to actually speak, but to try to, like, get the rock sounds out of my throat. To mimic it? Yeah, to try to figure out how those sounds work. As in, as I follow along behind him. As in you're going to try and vocalize it, or as in you're just thinking about it? I'm thinking about it, maybe sub-vocalizing it. Okay. If you need me to make a check for that, fine. I just... No, no. That's what I'm that, doing as I follow. That's fine. You don't need to check for that. All right. So you follow after him, and uh, you both make it back to the end. And uh, upon uh, arriving, he, he gestures for you to go through the door first. I, I open the door for the dwarf chivalrously. Uh, he... And step in. <laughs> he, 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 uh, he glares at you. Um but waits for you to go in first before entering himself. And his eyes, uh, uh, his eyes set upon you first, Verve. And you hear, you hear the barkeep see him and go, oh, Sigmar's teeth, not him again. Oh, you're known here. Uh, at this, the, the, the rune lord, uh, frowns and looks over at the barkeep and says, Yes, I'm aware of most establishments that sell piss water and and call it something different. And the barkeep uh, doesn't it just looks away uh, and is you see his jaw set in irritation, but he doesn't respond and just starts angrily cleaning his glasses all the harder. And then he turns his attention back uh, to Vertstadt and says. Mandling! You must be the, the Master Dwarf, yes. How can I help you? Uh, he, uh, he just sort of stares you down and says, My name is Roderick Stoneshaper. And in any event, I've come here to ask you a few questions. Of course, um, have a seat by the fire. Join me. Uh, he... <laughs> He looks, he looks at the seat uh, and then at the fire and then he turns his attention back to you and says uh, A proper Dawi does not sit upon such umgak. I'll stand. My own two feet are far more reliable than anything in this pig house of an inn. Very well. I hope you understand if I keep sitting. I have rather weak legs today. Uh, he nods as if what you said is just complete common knowledge. And then uh, turns his attention upon you and says, Have you ever been... Uh, I, I trust that you are uh, have been traveling around the Hager Cribs along with your companions. I will look over at him. Just I'll, I'll, I'll make sure that he sees that I see him. And before I go back to my book, um, and I'll just kind of peek up every so often. Uh, by now, I'll have ordered, like, a, a mulled wine, so I'll, I'll slowly sip that and say, yes, that's that's right, I've been traveling with uh, these two here. Do you want the bottle or just a glass? No, just a glass of mulled wine would be uh, good. Lose five breaths. Okay. Jeez. He uh, nods and says, have you been anywhere west of here in the last week? Hey, Grids are to the east. 
what's to the west of the Hagar Crips? The rest of Reichland? Um, so I'll say, um, no, I don't believe so. We traveled through there quite some time ago. He pauses for a moment and says, where are you from, Mandling? Uh, where, the, where am I from? Do you need to know, Master Dwarf? Yes, this line of questioning is not necessary. Uh, he, he holds up a gauntleted a finger in your direction, Elf, and says, um, if, if any dwarf ever listens to the way the wind moans, he would be hardly, uh, hardly a dwarf worth mentioning. I only ask what I need to know, and it's, n and what I need to know, I will ask, and that's all there is to it. You can oh, all right, so I'm from or... Bogenhofen. Very well, Master Dwarf, I will, I will answer your question. I am from a small, sleepy fishing village called Bathorn, towards the west, uh, on the Reichland. But I, I don't imagine you're familiar with it. Uh, he, he nods, and then uh, he pauses for a moment and says, You look unwell, Ungi. Even yes. for one of your weak kind. He did say that he had weak legs today. I will ignore the insult and say, um, yes, as I said, um, I'm having some health troubles recently. We just come to them from the doctor. He, he kind of, he, his eyes narrow noticeably. Um, and he will, um, <laughs> He'll simply nod, and uh, he turns on his heel and says, or he he raises his eyebrow and say, and and what? He kind of seems to search for the word. Uh, you see him kind of open his mouth and then close it and look up a little bit, and then he shakes his head and says, "And what illness has befallen you? May I ask?" Well, Master Dwarf, it's mostly just a thing of fatigue. I think I will eventually get over it. But the doctor claims that, um, and I will speak hushedly in these next few words, I will say, um, the doctor thinks that perhaps some vermin in this, uh, inn are the cause. Oh, not makes... just the inn. Verstat, <laughs> you've had this for a while, you said. Th that is what the doctor claimed, Verve. But, uh, you know, I well, imagine this inn doesn't help. I imagine the vermin, they're here. We've been sleeping in the woods, you know. You do, the, the two of you notice you are getting a little bit of side eye from the man who's uh, reading uh, uh, whatever paper he has with him. Like, he suddenly seems to have picked into the conversation and has a bit of a quizzical look on his face. Um, the rune lord, Roderick, looks mildly disgusted uh, before continuing says, You've been sick for a time, then. Oh, not too long. Maybe uh, half a week to a week. He... And like I said, it's mostly been manifesting in just fatigue. I mean, is that really a sickness? What doctor did you say you visited? I give him the doctor's name. Um, what was his name? Uh, Dr. Dr. Rupert. Rupert. He nods and says, Very well. That's all I needed. Um, may I ask a few questions of myself? He turns around, and he looks at you for a long moment, and he goes, No, and he leaves. Verve, who is that, and why did he demand personal knowledge of me? I will sigh and say, He thinks he is some sort of uh, above-the-law, uh, grandiose dwarf, as they all think they are. Uh, uh wrist, wrist when you walk over to the man he leans he leans conspiratorially towards you and in a low whisper he goes did they say there are vermin in this inn ah no the um. doctor thought some vermin bit him when he was off in the woods coming here and then when he said oh yes it shouldn't have happened last night and he said but yeah i woke up sore 
And he asked where we were staying, and we said, oh, the Harpy's Talent. And then he said, oh, of course, and just dropped the subject. He thinks because we are uh, of our speciality, and I will kind of uh, wiggle my fingers, um, that he should monitor us uh, closely, that it is his prerogative 